Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Cinema and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we're taking a look at World Shapers, a game designed by Mariusz Wilenski and released by Board and Dice and in this little small drafting game you are trying to shape a world so let's take a look at how it plays and then we're going to come back and see what we think about this one World Shapers is a small drafting game where you're trying to draft cards to shape a world. The game is played over two or three rounds depending on the amount of players you're playing with. And the game is played like this. You're going to get a handful of cards that are going to do the normal drafting thing. Where you look at the cards and you are going to choose a card. Put it face down in front of you and pass the rest of the cards to the player to your left. When everybody has done this you're going to reveal the card and you can do one of three possible things. You can either take the card, turn it over and place it under one of the elements like this is the water element. I'm going to place this card under the water element. The other thing I can do is that I can exchange it with one of these cards that are out on the table. If more people want to exchange it, there are rules to, to say who can do that. Oh, and the last, last thing I can do is that I can discard a card to get one of these power crystals which I can use to enhance cards. You can only do that, that once around and after everybody has done that you are going to pick up the cards from you got from the other player, pick another card and continue doing this. After you have chosen a card you can also put these power crystals on some of the cards. Like this card here has a power crystal symbol up in the corner. You can put it here and that will make the card worth more points or have special abilities. After you have played two or three rounds doing this then you're going to count off the points and the winner is the player with the most points. So that's a quick overview on how you play World Shapers. So what do you think about the artwork and components? Artwork and components, yeah let's talk about that. Let's start off by saying there's not too much to say because this game is basically a deck of cards and some tiles and some of these crystals. Power crystals. Power crystals is what it's called. That is basically what's in the game. So let's start with the positives. Uh, I really enjoyed the artwork on the cards. Yes. Really beautiful artwork and, and big cards which it looks good on the table like yes. when you when you have all of these different beautiful artworks which I'm holding under the camera. Sorry for that. They are a pair. They look good. I really, really like that. So, so you that feel is... like you're building a little world. Yeah, kind of strange you, world. You with a little elements. canvas in front of you, and each of the artworks um, matches their elements. Yeah, absolutely. So that is that is a positive. Let's talk about something that's not so positive. Uh, they have different symbols for different elements, which I think are kind of weird. Let's start with this one which is water. In my mind this is a wind symbol so it's kind of hard for me to to see like to understand which it is which is which. This could have been kind of like just a water symbol like a drop of water or many drops of water if you wanted to make it some different. So because like this is fire you will that's never pretty think obvious. that's not fire. And, and also this is wind which could have been earth. So maybe so actually water and wind are the ones that I do not like which makes the game a bit more hard to, to get into but but it, it's it's not like a huge problem because it are it are I'll call it in the text when it's sunless it says water it will be blue so you will understand that so it's not like a huge problem but I it's think, kind of a nitpick which I think it's a might be a problem for those who don't see colors um, yeah mm -hmm. the same yeah. colors as us but um, but you do uh, have the symbols on the card so it's, yes and you will see the symbols so anyway you will it's you not will. a huge struggle but it's a little bit annoying yeah absolutely uh, so yeah that's components basically not yeah. too much else to say so let's get to gameplay which is the big main part let's start with a positive this is a, in its core it's a super simple game to learn because it is a drafting game much like sushi go like it's a super simple filler drafter game where you will get some cards you will pick one and then you will either play it discard it for a power crystal or switch it with a card which is kind of maybe my favorite mechanism of the game yeah. that you have this kind of pool outside of the the, the other cards that you can switch it out but if all more players want to switch them out then there's a player with the least power crystals who gets to switch it out mm. that's kind of my favorite mechanism of the game uh, and that works kind of well and mm. uh, so in itself this game could be good mm -hmm. like it could be a, a super simple filler draft game the problem is that there are so many things that they did choose to do under production and the, the, the proofreading and the rules which makes this game not good. 
Yeah, I can't say much about that because you're always the one who reads the rules. Yeah. But you showed me some of the rules in the red book and I I would struggle to to play this right, I think. Mm. Uh, especially with my my lack of experience in the rule book reading. Mm. I think like the, the rules the rules are so simple, but they have made it like it, kind of they made the, the rules too simple because yeah. there's a lot of things that's not in here. There's a lot of a lot of cards which are really unclear, and then I'm gonna go. Okay, let's see what card does cards does doesn't say because there's only four cards that the designer like the publisher thought that we would not understand. That's always something I don't like in games. So like, oh, I don't understand this card. Open the rule book. This is not only this game. A lot of games does this. I open the rule book, and that's card not there. And I think like, okay, I'm just stupid because I don't understand this yeah. card because. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I should understand this card. I'm clearly supposed to understand it, so you feel kind of stupid. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and it's like, it's a lot of scoring, like, some of the, like, this is one thing. If the rules were just okay, that would be, that would be no problem if the cards were really clear. But the cards are not clear. The cards are hard to understand a lot of them, like, what does this mean? Why do we have these different terminologies? And one thing that is, is really strange is every card has this point value, like this, but it also has something that you have to do to get the exact same amount of points. So, in the beginning I was like, do you get these points? And then if you do this, do you also get these points? And that doesn't say anything about that in the rules, so the only logical thing would be, of course, that you will only get these points if this is true. But then why is this point here? Because a lot of these are like multipliers, so you will get two points for each, so it doesn't really, and some of them do have like a star because it's different how many points you get, but then there's a card that has two points here, but it's two points for each set of something, so why is that different than the star? Mm. And it's just this small thing that makes this confusing to play. Yeah, I agree. It's not very clear. I like that they've tried to make the symbols bigger and more because there is mm -hmm. some take that in the game and if that would work you have to be able to see what the other players Possibly have you get points in their for, tableau. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't think that is the most clear way to do it. No, and I, I think like this, this game suffers from that like if it was said in the beginning if it wasn't for the unclear rulings of the cards and the unclear rules and some choices they made this this could have been a simple filler drafting game which which is the point of the game to be super simple to learn you can play it in like 20 minutes with four players super quick you can play it with anyone but the problems with the production makes this more confusing to play than actually fun yeah but if i should look at the game play alone not with the flaws we mentioned here yeah I've then I, then i would think it's an okay game mm -hmm. i like what you're also liking the pool that you can switch mm -hmm. switch around and also that you can switch one time in a row in a round yeah, you can for... switch uh with a power cube yeah and that enhances another card so if if you don't have a card in your dead hand that is going to give you more than two points maybe then you can enhance a card and mm -hmm. get more three more points instead yep. i think it's too much take that in this game for me but that's yeah, not, yeah. Yep. that's only personal um so i think others will probably enjoy this in the game and and play around that but we mm -hmm. tend to like <laughs> Try not, not to use, yeah. uh, use the bad cards and um, maybe like switch them out of the game for mm -hmm. power cubes just to get rid of them. Yeah, but I, I like I didn't it didn't really bother me too much because it's like a twenty minute game. Yeah. Uh, and if you like, if you're not like us care bears who just hate everything that's called take that, there's not a lot of take that in this no. game. Just like a tiny little bit didn't really bother me too much because the other stuff bothered me more. The uh, so. Yeah, I think I'm ready to go to final thoughts. Anything else you want to add? No, I think we're heading there. We're heading there and you're finally probably seeing where we are. Do you want to start? Yes. I, do I don't like this game a lot. <laughs> um, if I'm going to sit down and play an easy game uh, that it has simple rules, takes uh, not that much time to play, I would not choose this game. And I can't really think of anyone that I would recommend it to. And I don't know if that's because of the flaws we have mm -hmm. talked about mm -hmm. or that it's not it's not that interesting. So I, I would mm -hmm. think of 
fun, fun, funner, fun, more fun, funner, funner, funner games to play. Yeah, for me, I I think this could have been like a a, a step up from Sushi Go, like a bit more than that. Like if you played Sushi Go and you just love that drafting thing and you wanted to play something more, then this could have been that. If the production and if the, the, the things they done with, with the rules were better and the cards were more easy to understand so that it would be easy for everyone to play without having to look up FAQs or having to ask questions to see like how does this work, how does this work because if you buy this game in a store and you just want to play it, you just want to play the game so it could have been a decent game which you could play with everybody but because of the problems we talked about I cannot recommend World Shapers and that's the end of the review, right? Yeah, yeah. It is. So, thank you for watching this small little review of World Shapers. If you did enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. That makes us happy. Yeah. We smile every time we get a new subscriber. And we don't usually smile too much. So that's like the only smile yeah. we get is that time. So please make, so li make our lives better by subscribing to our channel. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. And I'm Sudo. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye-bye.